What is up there guys, this is Cope, and this here is a video for the unprepared. For those of you who actually didn't play any World of Warcraft back in the days of Vanilla and the Burning Crusade, but are maybe interested in trying out Classic. It's important that you know just what you're getting yourself into. As such, this video is going to cover 10 reasons why you are not prepared for World of Warcraft Classic. Now, I'm not going to be focusing on things like specific features or any of that business. I'm going to be focusing on gameplay things. Things that are just drastically different to the game as it stands today. And things that are not quite so obvious just from reading, you know, old patch notes and that kind of stuff. Okay, so starting off with no ground mounts until level 40. Now this one is somewhat common knowledge, right? Everybody knows that way back in the day, you unlocked your first 60% speed mount all the way back at level 40, right? But I can't help but get the sneaking suspicion that people aren't really fully comprehending exactly what this means. I think a couple of things to keep in mind are, first of all, that there was really only one flight master per zone, per faction, so the taxi service wasn't exactly optimal. And second of all, leveling from level 1 to level 40 might seem like a joke in today's game. You can do that in a day, really, no problem. Um, back in vanilla, you're looking at like a month. Right? Like average, maybe, level 1 to 40. Leveling was very, very much a fully-fledged part of the game back in vanilla. Wow, it wasn't just something that you breeze through and, you know, rush headlong into endgame. But to put this into perspective, right, you're going to be running on foot to level in Feralus. You're going to be running around Stranglethorn Vale, which is a gargantuan zone. It's all one huge zone, you know, back in vanilla. You're going to be running around Stranglethorn Vale, leveling, killing gorillas, being sent all the way across the map to kill crocolisks or whatever on foot. I don't have the exact journey time on hand, but I'm gonna have it on the screen right now. Probably super, super sped up, but even things like running to a new questing location, running from, you know, Taran Mill in Hillsbrad, all the way to Hammerfall in Arathi, which was the only real quest hub in Arathi Highlands way back in the day, it took a substantial amount of time. Thus the journeying is real. So that's my number one. No mounts until level 40, expect the pain and misery to be real. And this one kind of ties in with point number two. I think all of these points kind of link up together quite nicely, uh, actually, but point number two, leveling is a major, major part of the game. If you've only played the game since, you know, Missa Pandaria or whatever, up until present day, then you're gonna know that things like heirlooms exist. There's gonna be all kinds of boosting feet. You can just buy a max level character for Christ's sake, right? It's all about the end game um, in Modern World of Warcraft. Well, it turns out that back in vanilla, leveling was a... Well, I mean, it, it was half of the game. If you're the kind of player who just plays for, you know, a few hours every day max, um, you clock in, you know, five or six days a week or something to play some WoW, then chances are you're going to be leveling in vanilla for the better part of, I'd say, a few months, most likely. Now, I don't know, maybe this will change because we are a more modern audience, we are more kind of, um leveling savvy, I suppose, than the, you know, original players who played back in vanilla, so maybe you'll be able to do it a little more quickly, but it's going to take a substantial amount of time. Honestly, though, I am fine with the leveling taking a long, long time. Um, when you're able to die while leveling, if you pull, like, two mobs, it definitely makes it a little bit more interesting. It also makes it really, really fun when, you know, you get to complete quests against elites, there's group quests all over the goddamn place. Leveling can end up being where you make most of your friends that you're gonna be doing things like, you know, dungeons or whatever, um, as you gear up at max level with. So the leveling being so, so hard kind of feeds into point number three, and that is, once you have picked a goddamn class, and leveled it up to max level, it becomes extremely difficult to switch. This is partially because acquiring gear at endgame is, you know, on the difficult side as well. Things like leveling professions is extremely, extremely difficult. And most of all, you've invested months and months of your life into just leveling the goddamn character, right? If you want to re-roll, you gotta go through all of that again. Now, of course, there are some pros and cons to this. The cons are that you're kind of stuck with what you got, or at least it's very, very difficult to switch, right? You've got to invest all of that time again into a new character and essentially leave your old character to kind of rot. I mean, you can sustain ults in vanilla, but you have to... I mean, you, you, you just have to have no life, so that would definitely be the con. Um, the pro, however, of characters taking so long to level and being so difficult to actually 
turn into something that you can be goddamn proud of, it's that you become proud to play your class. It's kind of funny as, you know, a player who played back in the Bannon Crusade, like when the Bannon Crusade first came out, that's when I started playing, you know, Young Cobb. Um, it's funny for me to see Blizzard really pushing all of these, all of these things like, you know, oh, class identity and we need to give them class order holes in Legion and, you know, we need to, like, people get hyped when they introduce, like, one class quest. And I'm thinking to myself, like, they had it right in the beginning. This is one thing that they did way, way better back in the day. There were class quests everywhere for all of the classes back in vanilla. And things took, things were so difficult, you know, just the leveling process was so difficult that by the time you reached max level, you were proud as fuck or whatever class you had chosen to um, make that investment into, you know? Point number four is that back in vanilla, and you know, this kind of feeds into the Venom Crusade as well, gold was goddamn premium. No one had any gold. Everyone was broke as shit. Now, of course, you had some goddamn gold tycoons who would kind of just run the economy of a server because, you know, servers were very, um, or rather characters were, you know, server specific and it was kind of a closed um, gold ecosystem back in the day. So you had like the ruling elite who were rich as fuck, but most players just had no money, just had no money. I remember leveling back in, um, back in early TBC, which, you know, it's close enough to vanilla, and just not even having enough gold to pay for a goddamn flight master to, you know, take me back to Orgrimmar to learn up, like, skill up my new warlock spells. And I remember I wouldn't even skill up, um, Curse of Shadows, Curse of Recklessness, or Curse of Tongues as a warlock, because you didn't really need them that much while leveling, and I just wanted to save the gold, god damn it. I also remember when I hit level 60 and unlocked the, um, like the epic riding skill, I didn't acquire enough gold to actually learn that goddamn thing until like level 64, 65, you know, during Outland leveling, so that was interesting too. Another thing you had to pay for as well back in the day, of course, was talent tree respecs. And you'd be respecing quite often depending on what class it was that you were playing. Um, druids had it pretty bad, warriors had it pretty bad, who had to be switching between, you know, tanking specs and... Uh, DPS specs quite often. And I mean, this brings us on to point number five, which, yeah, talent specs uh, are fixed. You know, no free talent rerolls, no free specialization changes, or any of that business. I believe it started out you had to pay like one gold to, uh, t to reset your talent points, then maybe it went up to like two, and then it was up to five, and then ten, and then it just kind of snowballed on from there, and it got very, very costly very, very, very quickly. And again, the cons of this were that if you were broke as hell and you didn't want to accept, you know, sympathy gold from your friends, you were kind of stuck in one spec. But the pros of that were that you were kind of married to the spec in a way, you know? It really bred spec identity. So again, similar pros and cons. Point number six. You are weak as shit. I hear a lot of people talk about, oh, you know, the game wasn't that hard back in vanilla, it wasn't that hard. You know, villain, uh, vanilla and TBC, if vanilla and TBC were exposed to modern players and players who were, you know, playing in Legion and BFA and shit, they would destroy that content and maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. But what a lot of people don't account for is that, yes, the content might not have been that difficult back in vanilla. Your class and most of the specs in the game were just feeble. They were just weak as shit. Again, most classes in the game, if you pulled like three mobs while leveling, you're gone, man. You're gone. You just die. Warriors, I'm speaking and thinking of you right now. But yeah, that's something definitely a lot of people don't account for. In the modern game today, it's very much, you know, oh, NPCs call you champion, like, what the fuck, when you pay to boost a character to max level, you turn up in Orgrimmar, Sylvanas gives you a quest, Hello, gr greetings, champion, and stuff, you know, like, and you're given all of these artifacts, the Heart of Azeroth from Magni, uh, Magni, you know, and you're interested with saving the world, and you're given all of these artifacts back in Legion and stuff like that, and you're like this law, you're like this god among men, or at least the NPCs certainly regard you as such. Back in the day, you're just a little gremlin, you're just a little pleb, you know? Now, some people won't like that. Some people are gonna hate that fucking feeling of their character just being weak as shit and just dying to goddamn, to random mobs and shit. But I, for one, like the challenge. You know, I'm, I'm the kind of guy who enjoys things like the Iron Man challenge. Every single character while leveling back in vanilla feels like a fucking Iron Man character. Kind of. So I love that shit. Point number seven. Your server reputation among the players on your realm actually matters. Nowadays in WoW, you can just leave a group whenever you want, right? Chances are you fucking just joined Group Finder or joined, you know, LFR or whatever, 
and no one gives a shit if you leave the group, you know? You're a place like that, but nobody cares, nobody's gonna remember your name, right? You're kind of in a battle group of what, how many dozen servers or something? No one gives a damn. Back in the day, there was no, you know, automatic dungeon group finder, there definitely was no LFR, and server communities mattered a lot. Characters were very, very server specific, there was no cross realm or any of that business, and I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna realize, you know, if you haven't experienced this, if you go back and you play WoW Classic and you play on those servers for, you know, a few months, you're gonna start recognizing people's names wherever you go, man. People know each other. People know who the best sub rogue on the server is. People know who the unbeatable Frost Mage duelist outside of Orgrimmar is. People just know these things. People know the alliance or like horde players on the opposite faction who are notorious gankers and always have to be dealt with because for some reason, for some fucking unexplained reason, they're killing lobbies, you know, at Hillsbrad Fields who were just trying to level. So yes, you can ninja loot and you can leave groups whenever you want and all of that shit, it all stays the same, but you're gonna be held accountable and if you do that shit too often, People are gonna fucking recognize you and call you a son of a bitch in trade chat, and I love it, man. Next up, point number eight. Your guild is your family. Let me say that again, man. Your guild is your goddamn family. Your guild, these are the guys who you're gonna be leveling with, who you're gonna be completing those quests with, that you're randomly assigned ten levels fucking early by that son of a bitch heartless NPC in Hillsbrad to go and kill a bunch of elites and you need to group up with your goddamn guildies. You're gonna need them for raiding, you're gonna need them for arenas, you're gonna need them if you want to farm, you know, the PvP gear. And if you try to go at guildless, you're gonna miss out on a shit ton of the game. Because again, your character is weak as shit. There's a lot of stuff that you just can't do back in vanilla on your lonesome. Oh, also, whenever you level up, you're actually allowed in vanilla to type ding in the guild chat, and people will say gzz, partially because you know they actually mean it. Alright, number 9 on the list. Oh yes, being globaled in PvP by sub rogues and Pompyro mages, also known as 3 minute mages. So this is a good one, again, I'm not really gonna nail down the mechanics here, okay? I'm just gonna say it like this. The damage to health ratio that we know in the game right now, like, you think that you get bears down in the game today? You don't know jack shit. You think that dying in like 3 seconds is quick? That's nothing. Try 0 0.3 seconds, you know, back in vanilla. Crazy shit is gonna happen in the unbalanced clown fiesta of a game that it was in terms of uh, PvP. It was a lot of fun, but just expect to be one shot at every now and then. And it's okay. It's fine. It's fine to get angry. Just play a fucking 3 minute mage yourself, right? Or a sub rogue yourself, that's, that's the answer. And finally, number 10. <laughs> There is obviously no group finder, but what a lot of people forget as well back in vanilla is that the meeting stones outside of dungeons are not summoning stones. Meeting stones, god damn it. Which means that, well, they don't really, they, um, they don't do anything. You can't summon other people to, to the outside of instances, man. You just gotta run. Unless you get a warlock to fucking summon people, but... And I mean, that one ties back into the having no mount problem as well, so this is so many little things to consider just from that statement, so I'm just gonna leave you guys with that. What things are you looking forward to, or are you terrified of, you know, going back into Classic WoW? I'd love to hear all about them. These were just my 10. I could make a video that covers a hundred of these goddamn things in the lead up to WoW Classic. With BlizzCon on the horizon, I'm starting to get, um, yeah, pretty stoked about going back. But alright, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope that you all having a great day. Hit subscribe if you enjoyed the goddamn video. And I'll see all of you guys in the next one.